Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, you know, we all have Bible study on Wednesday. Everybody does. And Bible study is to understand that's what the Word says. No, it's not about what the Word says, but the meaning of what the Lord wants us to know in the Word of God. Because we can read the Word and understand yes, what we're reading, but not understanding what yes. we're feeling. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes, my so we need to go to to the Lord, Amen. understanding the wisdom and knowledge wow. in the Bible study we're having, His gospel. What I want to bring up today is something that got me upon my heart. And I, I really never thought about it that way until He revealed it to me. I need to pray really quick. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. For all wisdom and knowledge and understanding you've given me in the Word of God. As I open up this afternoon, Lord God, for the Word of God, Father, move me with the Spirit, reveal to me more things that I can bring up to the church. Your church, Father. And I thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You heard of favoritism, right? How many times have we favored someone more than others? Even in our own family, sometimes you hear a parent telling a daughter or the son, son and daughter, what needs to be more like your brother? What needs to be more like your sister? Not knowingly, that's favoritism. Now, I'll tell you one thing. That doesn't go well with the Lord. Because He doesn't pay for no one. Amen. He looks everyone the same. Everyone. He showed me that years ago, but I kind of forgot a little bit about that favoritism. When He revealed to me about the prostitute that was thrown in front of Jesus and he said she was caught in the very act of adultery. Right. Right. But on the end, he says, I condemn you not. When everybody else was condemning her. They had inner favoritism. There's an inner favoritism within ourselves. That we favor ourselves more than someone else. And I never thought about that. You look at favoritism as, as just like God. Okay. You favoritism to that person more than the other. But there's an inner favoritism within yourself that you favor yourself more. And that's where we're going to get to the word right now. I'm Proverbs 16.6 By love kindness and the truth iniquity is atoned for. Atoned for. I'm going to stop right there for a second. When the disciples were in the upper room, they came back and forth about who's going to be greater. Jesus right away didn't yell at them, didn't say, you could have been, or oh, he's better, or I fear with this one. He said, no. He said, he put something around his waist, and he started washing their feet. Why did he do that? Because it wasn't about you better than that person. You were showing them that you had to serve with one another as the same as that person being, least of all, being as you. And it goes on. He has told us for that. The truth and iniquity. Love, kindness, and truth and iniquity is atoned for. We have love, kindness, and the truth of God in us. We don't have the truth of God. We don't have the truth of God. We don't have God at all. But that means the removal of an impurity redeeming us from death. And by fear of the Lord, one keeps away from evil. That evil is a favoritism within ourselves that I never really noticed that we have evil within us when we have favoritism. 
Dan Boro, Galatians chapter 2, verse 6. I'm going to read this and then I'm going to go back to explaining what the Lord has shown me in that. But of this who seem to be somewhat whatsoever they were, it makes no matter to me. Someone thinking that, oh, they're something they're not, doesn't matter to Paul. Paul's saying this. Doesn't matter to me. God accepted no man's person. What does that mean? He didn't favor someone more than the other. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. For those that seem to be in high authority or being something that they think they're something great or they are, to Paul they mean nothing. That means it didn't mean nothing to God. Then, countrywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed, committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, I thought about Peter, for that was done effectually in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty toward the Gentiles. He's bringing the Jews and bringing the Gentiles as them, the Lord receiving them the same as the other ones. No favoritism. And when James, Scythius, and John, who seemed to be killers, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me, Barnabas, the right hand of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathens, or the Gentiles. And they unto the circumcision. But there's no favoritism. The Lord is looking at both the sinner and the unsinner the same. Only they that would that we would remember the poor, the same which also was forward to do. See, we put aside on somebody that high ranked and forget about the least of the least that have none to eat. Because he's trying to show right here there's no favoritism in God. But when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed for it. Before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles, but when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing that which were about circumcision. Favoritism! Right there. What happened? What happened to that? This is what happened. He feared the Pharisees more than God. He favored them more than the Lord. And a little before, Paul says it was the pillars of God. We could be pillars of God, but that self favoritism within us, not knowingly, condemns us. It condemns us. And another Jew dissembled likewise with him. There were some Jews that were with the Gentiles and with the apostles. They were part of the part of people that believed in Christ. They got up with the rest of the apostles because they didn't get up away because the Pharisees came in. And what happened? They feared them instead of God. As much as Barnabas was carried away with a disillusion, even he was carried away, got away, rejected the will of God, because that wasn't the will of God, to turn around, hey, I got a favor this guy here, he's more frank, he's nobody higher than God, no one, but when he saw, they walked not 
uprightly according to the truth. There was no truth in that. The truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter, before them all, if thou being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compel the Gentiles to live as the Jews? Jesus said, there's no favoritism in it. In God, there's no favoritism. And that's what Paul's showing right now. But then by doing that, they were feared men instead of God. But were they, like, doing it on purpose? No, it's not everyone else right here. Us. Everyone. does the same thing, not knowingly. We can't easily condemn ourselves and fact and sin instantly. And not know it. Then I'll go back over here to this one. Uh, Galatians 3, chapter 3, verse 6 and 8. Even if Abraham believed God, and it was reckoned to him as righteousness, then seven says, therefore, be sure that it is those who are in faith who are sons of Abraham. Now, eight it says, the scripture foreseen that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel beforehand to Abraham, Say, all nations will be blessed in you. Be blessed in you. He believed by faith, the truth. But the Gentiles in the beginning with Abraham were already being called to be equal with the Jews. They were supposed to be all of us equal. Abraham knew that already. On, on James 3.14, But if you have bitter jealousy, selfishness, and ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant. So lie against the truth to lie against the truth. The truth is, the inner favoritism that we have is something we don't notice. We need to look at each other. I'll use myself as an example. I'm a mixed breed. I'm 57. I have friends that have pure dogs that they're breeding because they believe much are worthless. So they don't want no much mixed with a pure bread. So the Gentiles were actually the much, the Jews were the pure bread. But the Lord took that out of the way. No more. I'm not a mud. I'm equal with you guys. So what if I'm a mixed breed? I am 57. The Lord doesn't look at it that way. There's many people out there the same way. And people look down on them. Like a person that's mixed. You know, have black, have white, or have brown, or have black. And we look, and we see them, not knowing if we have favoritism within us, and within our minds, we are condemned. You don't have to say it, but what you think condemns you. So what do we do? If that comes in our mind, you need to repent within yourself and take that away from yourself and say, Lord, I don't want that inner favoritism within me. I need to look at everyone equal as the Lord looks at it. To have his thoughts and his thoughts in you that you are purified through the truth. <clears throat> in uh, 1 Peter 1, says you have in obedience to the truth, purify your souls for a sincere love of your brethren. When it says brethren, he's not talking about your immediate family, he's talking about everyone, all nations, equal, no favor to yourself. It says, For you, since you have obedience to the truth, purify your souls. Purify your souls that something in your mind should not be there. Repent on it, and the Lord will take it from you. 
purify your souls for a sincere love of your brethren, for fervently love one another from the heart. But you know what? Sometimes we can't love that in the heart because we have favoritism within ourselves. That I never thought about that until the Lord showed me today. I said, wow, I'm still learning. Thank you, Lord. I didn't think about it myself. He showed me. Uh, James 3.14 says, But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambitions in your heart, do not be arrogant and lie against the truth. When we have favoritism, we're lying against the truth. We're rejecting the Lord. So how many people are there rejecting the Lord and don't know that? Not only when the apostles backed up away from the Gentiles, they fear more of Pharisees than God. Did they know they were doing that? No. They were finding favoritism in them. And instead of fearing God, they were fearing them. Did they do it on purpose? No. We don't do it on purpose either. That's what the Lord showed me today to bring that up. They rejected the purpose of God. When we do something like that, we reject God's purpose that He's given us to do. And it's very simple. Favoritism within yourself is dangerous. Do we have favoritism in our life? You probably never knew you did. But you know now? Because I know now. How many times have we rejected God not knowing Him? Probably quite a few times. Quite a lot of times. That's why we have Bible study. God reveals something in the Word of God and it was be brought up to the church for understanding and it's supposed to be witnessing yourselves to others when you see something like that bring it to their attention that they be saved too not self-condemned in self what? favoritism that brings us down away from the Lord rejecting the will of God and that's what the Lord showed me now here's my example to myself as an example of Isaac 57 that sometimes I felt like I was in a pure bread but you know what? <laughs> You gotta do with God. God doesn't look at that. God looks everywhere equally and the same. So now I walk a better about myself that I know something about this that the Lord showed me. That I am worth something in the Lord. That we all worth something in the Lord. Praise God. That was the message you gave me for the Bible study on this tonight. Do you have any questions in that? One question? <laughs> Praise God, hallelujah. I know it wasn't that long, but that's all I have because it's what the Lord showed me and I revealed it to you. And to me, it's amazing, something so simple Yet nobody thinks about it. Not like it's, that word said that no one has a thought of God. His thoughts are higher than us. When He reveals something to you, then you search the Bible, and there it is. Praise God. All of glory is here. All of glory. Praise God. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You said, you, you said, fear God.